When you listen to your hi-fi system, are you usually listening alone or are there other people listening with you? Because for me, generally speaking, since I started writing about hi-fi in 2010 and then on YouTube here, I think we started that in 2018, for me, listening to hi-fi is mainly a solitary pursuit. So in my sort of professional work as judging hi-fi components, I'm very much sort of working in my own bubble here in Berlin or in my apartment over there in that direction in Portugal. Which is why every week I make a point of phoning Michael Lavornia of Twittering Machines. I speak to Jana Dagdagan, who contributes sort of in the background to the YouTube direction of this channel and various other things. I also make a point of phoning Terry Ellis of Pursuit Perfect System in London. Very occasionally I speak to Steve Gutenberg in New York. And more recently I've been talking to Randy at Cheap Audio Man. Now, I do all of this because I want to know what they're thinking about certain hi-fi components or their process or the way they work. But mainly, it's so that I don't work entirely in a bubble. I have communication with the outside world of hi-fi, I guess, assessors or press members or YouTubers, whatever you want to call them. Because I know also that they too are generally working in isolation in their own little bubbles. So I'm trying to sort of join the dots between people, which is also why over the years I've made a point of having people like Michael or Srijan Eban at Six Moons or even Jeff Dorgay over at Tone Audio as part of my sort of regular production process, mainly on podcasts. But Srijan does write for Darko Audio every now and again, as do a couple of other contributing writers. So I'm trying to sort of reach out to other people to make it more of a collaborative effort. However, the most collaborative thing that I do throughout the year tends to happen behind closed doors and you never see it and you never see me talk about it until once a year. And that's when, like today, the ISA Hi-Fi Awards have been announced for this year. Now ISA is basically a collection of about, I think, 60 publications from around 30 countries around the world. And it's not just hi-fi, it's also home theater audio, home theater video, in-car electronics, and mobile electronics. And all of these categories get split up into what's called expert groups. And me, as I guess the editor publisher of Darko Audio, I'm a member of the hi-fi expert group, and only the hi-fi expert group so I don't get to kind of play in the other groups. However, many times throughout the year, I meet with the other members of the Hi-Fi Expert group on Zoom. And I'm really just a cog in this much larger wheel because on each Zoom call, there's probably about 20 different other publishers and editors. And a lot of them are based in Europe, but some are based in Canada, some in the USA, some in Australia. So it's very much an international affair and it's, you know, it's, it's quite a nice thing to do you know, every once in a while to remind yourself that you're not working in a bubble and there are other people who have much more experience than you in assessing hi-fi gear. I mean, a lot of these guys who work for, I guess many of them run print magazines and I guess they also have websites associated with those as well. So I get to learn a lot from their approaches to hi-fi. They've been doing it generally a lot longer than me. So it's good to be a smaller part of a sort of larger movement, a larger collaborative movement that really takes place under the ISA banner. And we meet many times a year because what we're really doing is we're trying to sort of filter out some of the, the best hi-fi components introduced during that year. And basically at the start of June, every magazine gets to nominate what it thinks are the best hi-fi products in various categories for the preceding 12 months. Now, this isn't the best hi-fi product from the last 10 years or 20 years, it's the best from the last 12 months, right? So it's really only new stuff. And so we nominate these things, so it, all of us kind of throw our multitude of hats into the ring for various products. And then a short list is kind of collated from there, but that's all taken care of by the hi-fi expert group leader. I don't get to see any of that. In fact, I don't get to see any of what anybody else or any other member or any other editor publisher of a magazine gets to nominate. 
And then once that kind of shorter list is collated, we then get to vote on those things. So it's kind of slowly filtered down. But again, none of us get to see each other's votes. All votes are anonymous. And then at the end of these voting processes, I mean, there might be several stages, depending upon how many ties need to be broken during any particular stage. But at the end of this, we get a list of what we might call award winners. This is not just one person's opinion. This is not just my opinion, obviously. This is the opinion or the collective opinion of 20 or so Hi-Fi magazine editor slash publishers. So it's kind of a, a corret opinion, I guess it is, or a, an opinion by committee. I mean, you can feel free to disagree, obviously, but this is, I guess, the opinion of many, 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 <laughs> I guess I'm not, I'm not being unkind there, but many years of experience in the hi-fi industry, many more than I have, because I've only been doing this 13 years, and then many of the members of the hi-fi expert group have been doing it since the, possibly the 80s, the 90s, some since the 70s. This episode is brought to you by AudioQuest, makers of the mythical series Analog Interconnects. Click the link in the show notes for more information. So, on my laptop in front of me here, I have all of the award winners for the Hi-Fi Expert Group as part of ISA for 2023-24. So we'll dive right in. The ISA stand mount loudspeaker for this year is the MoFi Source.8. That's a loudspeaker designed by Andrew Jones. Regular followers of this channel will know that I spoke to Andrew Jones about this very speaker in Munich this year, and I'll put a link to that video interview in the description box below. And then ISA floor standing loudspeakers of this year goes to the Bowers & Wilkins 703S3. I have reviewed these myself. We made a video about two months ago. And again, I'll put a link to that video in the description box below. Now the award for ISA's premium loudspeakers of the year go to a floor stander. It's the Perlison R7 t And I have zero experience with this loudspeaker, so I don't know what else to say about it really. I'm sure it's fantastic. It's not really my thing when it comes to the aesthetics of a loudspeaker, but that's my opinion. My opinion is one in this case, in the case of the HISA, HISA? in the case of the ISA expert group, is one in 20 or one in 22. Likewise, the award for the ISA high-end loudspeakers of the year goes to the Wilson Audio Alexia 5. Now, again, I have no experience with this loudspeaker. This is generally beyond this channel sort of remit. I tend to sort of cap the coverage of loudspeakers at about 20,000 euros. And yeah, I'm pretty sure the Wilson go quite a long way north of that. Hence the high-end loudspeakers award for this year. Bringing us right back down to earth are the KEF LSX2, which win the ISA Wireless Bookshelf Loudspeaker Award for this year. Now, I have reviewed these. I reviewed these last year. And they're a fantastic little pint-sized loudspeaker that connect to streaming services because they have a streaming module built in. And they also have HDMI ARC now built in. A great little speaker at a very affordable price. And I'll put a link to my video again in the description box below. Now, on-wall speakers is not something I'm prepared to tackle on this channel. I think for obvious reasons, because I don't want to be drilling into my walls. I rent this apartment and it's just, for me, it's a major hassle. However, there are members of ISA who do tackle this kind of thing. And the ISA on-wall loudspeaker award for this year goes to the System Audio Silverback one from Denmark. So yeah, well done to System Audio. However, the next one I do have experience with, well, kind of. So the ISA Wireless Floor Standing Loudspeaker of the Year goes to the Dynaudio Focus 50. Now I've tackled the Focus 30, I think that was last year. I'm still, I guess, <laughs> in the running. That's, a, that's not the right way of describing it, but I'm still, it's still on my slate to do the Focus 50, but I guess I'm waiting for them to introduce another significant update before I say, yes, yeah, send me that pair because I'm familiar with the platform, because it's a streaming platform. I think the only thing really missing from those loudspeakers is an HDMI eARC input. But I've been thinking about this quite a lot recently. I mean, a lot of people love eARC, and I do, because it means I can turn on my TV and my hi-fi system with my Apple TV remote control. But if a hi-fi product does not have eARC, I just use Toslink. 
So that means I can still turn on my TV with my Apple TV remote control, but any volume adjustments I have to use the product's own remote control. So it's really just a matter of putting down one remote and picking up another. So I tend to think that enthusiasm for eARC, certainly from my point of view, comes from a point of laziness. Now one thing I've learned from listening to a whole bunch of headphones in the last five years, certainly more than I listened to in the previous five years, is that headphones for me are an essential way to work out what bass should sound like without the coloration of the room. Because I really think that unless you're consistently listening to headphones, then you really don't know what bass should sound like. Unless, of course, your room is perfectly treated in the low end. But I don't know many people who can lay claim to that. So I think headphones are pivotal in keeping us abreast of what, yeah, what bass should sound like. Now, I generally only tackle, in terms of reviews, one or two high-end-ish sort of headphones every year. I'll tell you why. It's because the numbers on YouTube don't really justify my doing any more in terms of viewer numbers. Many of you aren't really that interested in high-end headphones, but occasionally you are. And one that I did review this year with Srijan Ebain, collaborative, right, uh, on a podcast, was the Meze Audio 109 Pro. And they win this year the ISA headphones for 2023 slash 24, which obviously is this year, yes. I've done a lot of streaming DACs this year. Well, I can think of three, the Blue Sound Node X, the Fio R7, and obviously the Eversolo DMPA6. Now, I do those because they have DACs inside, but products I tend not to do very much of anymore, and I'll probably explain why in a different video, although I've already explained why on my Patreon, are streamers without DAC, so just digital streamers. Now, I do have this next product here. I have used it. I do think it is excellent. No, I'm not going to tell you whether I voted for it or not or nominated it or not, but it eventually won the ISA streamer of the year, and that is the iFi Audio NeoStream because it's just got digital outputs that you connect to your own DAC. There's a little tiny screen on the front. You can lay it sideways. You can sit it upright. I don't think I'm going to get time to review it this year because I'm probably more focused on the GoPod, which iFi also sent me. But yeah, the ISA streamer of the year is the iFi Audio NeoStream. And if you've got a NeoStream, you possibly might want to connect it to a DAC. And one such DAC might be the Ferrum Audio Wandler. I say Wandler because Wandler is the German word for digital audio converter. And I know that Marcin, who is the head of Ferrum Audio, is, like me, learning German. I think he's probably progressing a little bit more quickly than me. But anyway, congratulations to Marcin because this year his Wandler wins ISA DAC of the year. However, if you're looking for an alternative to the iFi NeoStream product, maybe at a more affordable price point, you might want to consider this next award winner. So the ISA Digital Player of the Year goes to Volumio's Revo. Now, I have no experience with this, so I don't really know much about it. But I do know that from playing with Volumio pretty much every year for the last five years, I know that the software platform is extremely solid. And possibly that would remain one of my go-to Raspberry Pi operating systems whenever I set up a Raspberry Pi for streaming audio. Our next award goes to a product that we reviewed only last week, and that's the Hegel Viking CD player. And it gets the ISA High-End CD Player Award for 2023-24. Yes, the Viking is expensive, but that's why it gets the award for High-End CD Player of the Year. So let's turn our attention to vinyl. And the winner of the ISA turntable of the year goes to the Torrens TD204. Now, you might call this Thorens, but in Germany we say Torrens, and I guess it's just hard to break a habit like calling IKEA IKEA. So yeah, anyway, I don't have one of these turntables, so I can't comment on this. But if we move down to the next one, again, I don't have this turntable either. I have a, I have a Thorens over there, actually, but I don't have this, this Project T2W turntable. I don't have one of these, but it's a wireless turntable. And I guess that's designed for integration into streaming systems. So if you want to stream your vinyl from one area of your house to another, it's really useful for that. So yeah, the Project T2W wins ISA's Vinyl System Award for this year. Now, the ISA Award for the Integrated Amplifier of the Year goes to 
the NAD C3050. That's the standard edition of this amplifier, the non-limited one. So it's a streaming amplifier with Dirac built in, but it's got VU meters on the front because it's designed to look like a vintage amplifier. Now I reviewed the limited edition version that came out at the end of last year, and I'll put a link to that video, again, you've guessed it, in the description box below. But if you don't have NAD kind of money, you might want to take a look at this next one because this is ISA's best value streaming amplifier for the year. And that goes to the SVS Prime Wireless Pro Soundbase. Now, I looked at this in terms of the speakers, so the Prime Wireless Pro streaming active loudspeakers last year. The Soundbase is the integrated amplifier kind of version that integrates that streaming platform. However, another alternative might be the Blue Sound Power Node Edge, which gets the award this year for ISA's compact streaming amplifier of the year. And I also have made a video about this Blue Sound Power Node Edge linked in the description box below. It's a great little unit. It has some unique features that aren't available on the SVS, but I guess that's also true of the SVS. It has features that aren't available on the Blue Sound. So you'll have to dig into those to work out which one might be best for you. Our next award, our next ISA award, is the Streaming Receiver of the Year Award, and that goes to the Yamaha RN2000A. And again, I have no experience with this product. I'm sure it's fantastic, but I can't really say anything about it because I have zero experience with it. Equally, ISA's award for the high-end integrated amplifier of the year goes to the Musical Fidelity New Vista 800.2. I mean, yeah, again, I have no experience with this amplifier, but I guess many ISA Hi-Fi expert group members do. Now, this next product I actually did want to review, but I chose another product from this same manufacturer when presented with a choice earlier this year as to which one I would want to cover, because I only wanted to do one. And I went with the Viking CD player from Hegel, mainly because I was a big fan of the Mohican and I already had that here. However, I also have the 590 streaming integrated beefcake amplifier here that's over my left shoulder. You can possibly still see it. And most recently, Hegel introduced its successor, the 600. Now, I haven't heard it. I haven't even seen it. I, I don't know. It's, it's brand new. But it wins, yeah, the high-end streaming amplifier of the year award through other members of the Hi-Fi Expert Group. Now this next award goes to a product which is very, very, very expensive. And when the manufacturer asked me if I would review it, I said no, basically because it is so very, very expensive. But my position on that is softening in a little bit because it seems to be picking up all the accolades as well it should for its price point because it's something around 30,000 euros or dollars. Don't quote me exactly on that, but it's, yeah, it's, it's many tens of thousands of dollars. And it's the DCS Lena, which is a three box headphone system. So you've got a, a, you've got a clock, a DAC, and a headphone amplifier all in three separate boxes, which you can put side by side, you can stack vertically. So I might, I don't know, if I get time towards the end of this year, I might, I might try and get one of these to have a listen to it. But anyway, ISA has awarded it the high-end headphone solution for 2023 slash 24. And obviously you'll need some headphones to go with that, Lena, if you choose to buy it or borrow it or audition it in a store. And the ISA high-end headphones for this year goes to the Yamaha YH5000SE. I have no experience with these, but I understand they're pretty damned amazing from, I can't remember who's telling me about this. It might have been Jude from HeadFi or it might have been somebody else, I don't remember. But yeah, I heard good things about these in Munich this year. Now this next award is awarded jointly with the Mobile Devices Expert Group. So remember there's the Hi-Fi Expert Group and there's also other expert groups. And this one is awarded, yeah, with the Mobile Devices Group. And this is for a product that I've got a video coming up about in the next two or three weeks. We've shot the B-roll, I just haven't, actually, no, I have. I have finished my script, I just haven't shot this part of it yet, which I will get to. And this award goes to the T plus A Solitaire T, which is essentially a wired headphone which you can use at home, but it also has a Bluetooth aerial and DAX and amps inside, so you can use it as Bluetooth active noise cancelling headphones out in the street. 
and I believe this is the most expensive pair of, not Bluetooth headphones, but active noise cancelling headphones on the market right now. I think they sell for around 1,300 euros. And so the, the Solitaire T pick up the ISA award for premium wireless headphones for this year. And whilst we're on a sort of portable audio kick, the award for the ISA Mobile DAC of the year goes to the iFi Audio GoPod. Now I haven't reviewed these, but my contributor John Granberg has done an extensive written review for my website. I'll put a link in the description box below for that. But I do have a set and I've been using them on and off for the last few months. I've got to say, they are way better than I expected them to be. I don't love the fact, or the, rather the way they dangle behind the ear, but I can live with that because the sound quality, I think it's because they separate all, out all the chips. So you've got a separate Bluetooth receiver, separate DAC, separate amplifier chip. And because of that, the sound is not being processed by a single chip and therefore sounds a lot more substantial. At least that's my experience and that's my best guess as to why. But yeah, the GoPods, absolutely fantastic, I think. And then jointly awarded with the home theater expert group is the ISA loudspeaker series for 2023-24. And that goes to the KEF R series, of which the KEF R3 Meta is a member. Now I spent three weeks listening to those during my last trip to Portugal. I am gonna have a pair sent here, but they've been delayed for whatever internal KEF reasons but I'm definitely getting the blue pair as I have in Portugal because they're absolutely fantastic. And I gotta say, these speakers are really something else. I don't wanna give the game away too early ahead of my review, but I mean, I've put enough hours on them to know really kind of my rough opinion. Yeah, absolutely fantastic for the R3 Meta. But this is for the entire R series loudspeaker, so the floor standers and the center channels as well, and also I guess the upfiring Atmos modules. And then lastly, we get to the end. The ISA powered stand mount loudspeakers of the year go to another product that we've reviewed here, Klipsch's The Sevens, which is a slightly larger than the Fives powered loudspeaker. It is an active loudspeaker as well, and it has digital inputs, HDMI eARC. There's no streaming here, but there is a phono stage inside. I thought these speakers were really, really good when I reviewed them about a month ago, really, truly. And so, yeah, if you like a healthy dollop of low-end womp, then I really think the sevens are a fantastic choice. So yeah, anyway, if you liked this video, if you thought it was just like a bit of fun, as I do, I think this is a bit of fun. I think just awarding stuff is a bit of fun, but it's not just my opinion, right? The point is, is that these awards aren't like my end of year awards or Michael Lavonia's end of year awards or Srijan Ebain's end of year awards. They don't come from just one person. They come from a committee of editors and publishers of hi-fi magazines but if you still can take that with a dollop of i guess light-heartedness because this isn't super serious this is not life and death if the product that you thought should win an award didn't it's not the end of the world you know you can make up your own awards you could create your own award system if you wanted to there is nothing to stop you from doing that so if you want to do that please go ahead i would love to hear about it on your channel or on your website but if you yeah if you like all of that then please give us a like down below god that was a mouthful wasn't it and if you like my attitude towards i guess making my job more collaborative than it seems at first blush as in maintaining contacts with many other people who do what i do for a living and also in a professional context as part of ISA and its associated expert groups. If you dig all of that, then please consider subscribing to this channel. And as always, thank you ever so much for watching.